Today I will present a, a project uh, conducted mostly by two PhD students in the group, uh, Celia Vincent and, and Vincent Mouillot, uh, and who was uh, recently published in development. So uh, the patterning of the bilateral body is orchestrated by the differential expression of Hox transcription factor along their rostrocodal axis. Uh, in vertebrates, oxys are encoded by 39 genes uh, organized in four genomic clusters and display anterior boundaries of expression collinear with their chromosomal location. It's located in three prime of the cluster are expressed more, more anteriorly than their five prime neighbors as depicted here uh, in the nervous system or uh, in the somites, uh, for example. Um, and uh, in this tissue, somites and nervous system, the uh, uh, Hox regionalized expression is initiated by the temporal activation of Hox gene from three prime uh, to five prime genes in axial progenitors that are located in the caudal line of embryo and that fuel embryo axial elongation during embryo kinesis. Axial uh, progenitors are specified by wind uh, and FGF signaling. Um, and uh, will progressively differentiate into um, mesodermal or uh, neuronal progenies. And for example, the differentiation into uh, neural progenitors is uh, favored by retinoic acid uh, derived from the abutting somite. And as these progenitors will uh, contribute to more codal mesodermal or neuronal progenies over time, the three prime to five prime sequence of oxygen activation in the codal region will be translated uh, into a collinear spatial pattern of expression. Then uh, uh, this leads to differential expression of oxygen along the rostrocodal axis, which will instruct, for example, uh, in the spinal cord, molecularly and functionally distinct motoneuron subtype uh, that will innervate and control the different muscle of the body. And motoneuron subtype specification thus represents a fine readout of Hox clock regulation. So coupling between uh, the tempo of the Hox clock during embryogenesis and embryo uh, elongation is thus essential for rostrocodal pattern. However, the mechanism uh, regulating the tempo of this clock uh, remained elusive. It was shown uh, in different models, including in the caudal region of mouse embryo, that changes from a transcriptionally term, uh, repressive chromatic state uh, within the complex to a transcriptionally permissive state occurs within uh, OX complexes, and that changes correlate with their uh, temporal sequence of induction. This led to a model proposing that an implicit chromatin based timer could regulate the tempo of OX activation. On the other hand, OX exp uh, extrinsic factors, secreted factors such as retinoic acid or wind, FGF or GDF11, many of them important during axial elongation have been shown to modulate Hox expression patterns in different systems, including, for example, in the caudal neural tube. Therefore, uh, whether the progressive opening of the chromatin along the complexes uh, serve as an internal timer actuated by these extrinsic cues that will maintain the progenitors, axial progenitors, or whether sequences of secreted factors uh, would activate progressively more uh, caudal oxygens uh, uh, largely defined the tempo of, of the clock uh, remained uh, unclear. So we thought that uh, uh, in vitro differentiation of pluripotent stem cell could be a, a good way to uh, assess uh, this question because the two models imply different uh, differentiation strategies. The intrinsic model predicts that the specification of posterior identities from axial uh, progenitors will require precise synchronization between the timing of differentiation and the internal Hox timer. While alternatively, the extrinsic model uh, implies that the sequence of Hox is controlled by this uh, sequence of factors and that exposing axial progenitors to uh, the relevant extrinsic use should uh, control the Hox clock to generate progenies of defined rostrocodal identity. So we just relied on our previous work uh, in which we showed that exposure of human pluripotent stem cell uh, aggregated in embryoid bodies to wind uh, uh, agonist, uh, the carrier, or NTGF beta and uh, BMT inhibitors will uh, generate axial progenitors like cells that will then be further differentiated upon retinoic acid and sonic agents into neural progenitors and motoneuron progenitors to finally very efficiently give rise to a uh, spinal motoneuron. We thus decided to use this approach to study the mechanism facing the Hox clock in axial progenitors 
uh, during that differentiation into spinal motor neurons, a cell type that, as I said, uh, depends on OX code to acquire appropriate post codal uh, subtype identity. So first, to be able to assess functionally the impact of the OX clock on progeny identity, we characterize OX expression pattern in human embryonic spinal cord. And briefly, we observe that their expression patterns are globally conserved between mouse and human, with OXY6 labeling anterior brachial motor neuron, then OXY8 uh, being expressed, for example, in the caudal brachial domain, C9 thoracic, and C10 at the lumbar level. Using the OX code and uh, in vitro differentiation into axial progenitors, we tested the barometers controlling human pre stage cell uh, axial progenitor differentiation in motor neuron subtypes located at different uh, rostocodal positions. We observe that similarly to what uh, likely happened in the embryo, when we keep the progenitors uh, uh, in culture and progressively delay the time of their exposure to retinoic acid and sonic drug, which favor the neural differentiation, we obtain uh, uh, progressively more codal motor neuron subtypes, as shown here by uh, the expression of typical uh, uh, motor neuron marker at D9 and IL8, and the progressive appearance of uh, more codal auditing, such as OXY6, when we expose the progenitors on day three, and then uh, OXY8 on day four, and OXY9 appearing on day five. So, these results show that these progenitors are uh, 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 bona fide uh, axial progenitors. And, and, and able to generate a, a progenies of distinct rostrocodal identity, and that they undergo a temporal shift in rostrocodal potential to generate more codal uh, cell types. So to assess the molecular mechanism underlying these temporal changes, we perform RNA sequencing on these progenitors. And first, what we observe, uh, 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 we observe a high enrichment for typical markers of codal uh, epiblast, in which axial progenitors reside in mouse and sheep such as SOX2 or CDX2, uh, uh, further confirming the identity of the cell. Then we observe that the progenitors undergo a collinear activation of Hox complexes differentially expressed in the spinal cord, such as the uh, Hox A complex, as you can see here, or Hox C complex by the sequential expression of C6 and D2, then C8, and then C9 later on. Um, so this suggested that the, there's a sequential activation of protein and uh, uh, suggested the possibility of an uh, uh, intrinsic timer uh, progressing in this in this uh, in this acceptability. But however, when we further uh, analyze the transcriptomic data by performing a, a, a geo annotation on upregulated genes between day two and day three, we observe a significant enrichment for annotation indicating an activation of the MAP NS Earth pathway which is often downstream of uh, FGF signaling. We observe also a temporal uh, increase in some FGF ligand over time, such as FGF8, for example. So this result suggests that the uh, increase in FGF signaling parallels the sequential activation of protein. And as FGF was previously shown to change the heart expression in the neural tube, for example, we investigated whether this uh, rise in endogenous FGF signaling might be important for heart activation. So we decided to inhibit FGF signaling or uh, uh, the make ERC pathway uh, in, in these progenitors. So we exposed uh, these three progenitors to this and uh, uh, investigated uh, OX expression uh, with real-time PCR. And you can see the sequential activation of C6, then C8, and then C9 over time. And this activation is fully blocked by FGF receptor inhibitor uh, inhibition as well as make inhibitor uh, addition. So this result, and, and consequently, uh, uh, then uh, brachial uh, uh, motor neurons are generated from these uh, late progenitors, while they normally generate so thoracic motor neurons. Uh, so which this result uh, showed that uh, FGF signaling was necessary for the ox clock to proceed. So we then wonder whether uh, FG, uh, exogenous FGF could uh, uh, accelerate this clock. So we exposed these three progenitors to exogenous FGF, and uh, monitor the expression of protein in axial progenitors, and we observe that uh, uh, it uh, actually induces uh, protein expression, so promote the uh, expression of proteins in axial progenitors, and consequently lead to the generation of uh, more codal motor neuron subtypes, such as thoracic motor neurons, and this pathway is here, as you can see. 
uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, but uh, in all these cases, we couldn't generate more uh, codal uh, subtypes of uh, motor neurons, suggesting that either the progenitors, actual progenitors generated, were not competent to generate the codal end, or uh, were uh, 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 requiring other tools to further uh, accelerate the, the clock. So GF11 is a factor that uh, uh, is uh, regulating trying to tell transition and was shown to be important for the expression of thoracic lumbar heart genes in the spinal cord, including in motor neurons. So we thus exposed uh, these three progenitors to uh, uh, a combination of FGF and GGF11. The two factors uh, cooperated uh, to strongly induce oxy 9 and oxy 10 very codal oxygen, and consequently limited the specification of uh, uh, very codal motor neurons, including lumbar motor neurons. So overall, uh, our results show that axial progenitors can be efficiently induced from the repetent stem cells, um, and, and that they undergo uh, progressive activation uh, of oxygens of the kind. And uh, these uh, 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 progenitors, uh, 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 the sequence of, of cues uh, that these progenitors encounter will decide the type of uh, oxygen they express such as FDF for the SORES-11 or FDF plus GDF-11 and bypass or accelerate the oxlock to generate uh, uh, lumbar regions. So uh, uh, our results strongly uh, argue that the, uh, uh, the oxlock in human progenitors is dynamically controlled uh, by extensive tools and such that this result suggests that in the embryo, uh, the pace of the oxlock might be controlled by the sequential exposure to extensive expressed in the codal region, which raises the question of the mechanism controlling the temporality of this cube. And finally, a, a, a second important aspect of the work is the development of differentiation strategy to synchronously and efficiently generate specific motor neurons that display differential vulnerability in disease, uh, which is an important step toward a further un uh, understanding of this disease. And uh, uh, with that, I will uh, uh, thank uh, uh, the different uh, Vincent and Celia, who mostly conducted the work, with the help of uh, Remy for our gene expression analysis, and uh, as well as all our collaborators. And uh, if you want, I skip some details. So if you want to know uh, more about the uh, project, or uh, uh, please uh, uh, read the paper or discuss after or contact. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan. Can I ask how much evidence is there for uh, a temporal increase in FGF signaling in the embryo in vivo during axial elongation? And, and what, what is the mechanism? If, assuming there is increase in FGF signaling, what is, the is it an increase in expression of FGF or is it an accumulation of FGF protein because it's, it's quite a stable <coughs> factor. Uh, can you can you comment uh, on what is known in vivo? So it, it was shown by uh, intuition that there might be an increase in FGF expression uh, in the uh, over time in the codal end of, of embryos. Um, but whether that translates into increased uh, expression of protein level, uh, I think is, is currently unknown. Um, alternatively, the, the cells might uh, 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 tend the, the duration of FGF signal, which we actually show in the paper that uh, um, uh, oxygen can be uh, promoted, expression can be promoted uh, either by increasing the concentration of FGF or uh, uh, ex exposing the cells for longer to, to FGF. So I think in vivo, it's, it, it's still unclear what, what um, what are the level of FGF and or whether it's the duration the cell uh, spend in the, in the codal region that will uh, define the, the sequential activation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there are two questions from Teresa Ryan. Teresa Ryan. Uh, first, do you expect the same effect in mouse models? And second, the motor neuron characterization was tested at day 14. Did you observe any changes in the time of motor neuron generation? Yeah, so um, if I expect the same, uh, I, I would uh, I guess the question is regarding whether we could do that in vitro, in mouse, uh, in vitro mouse model. Um, I would guess yes. Uh, we haven't tested that yet. 
uh, if it's in vivo, um, uh, I, I think, yes, we, we could also expect that these cues uh, that actually have been shown to regulate uh, the axial extension of embryo and whole gene expression in mouse embryo could uh, um, uh, regulate that in mouse model as well. Um, the, we, uh, no, we didn't observe changes in the time of motor neuron generation. They were, uh, uh, and I think that's what also argued for that we really um, uh, accelerate the clock or, uh, or bypass it because we can uh, generate the motor neurons with the same timeline of differentiation when we expose them to the relevant 